So today I want to talk a little bit about uh, infinity, like I did in a previous video. But uh, I want to approach infinity, uh, so to speak, from a different direction. Uh, in, the, in the other video, uh, I, I talked about infinity as sort of um, a, a way of counting like a pile of objects, like a pile of numbers. And in this video, I want to approach infinity as uh, uh, a limit, as a way of, a, of, of approaching something, not so much as a way of counting something. So let's see what I mean by that. Uh, I'm not going to define limits in a precise way. I'm going to leave that to a different video. But I'm going to sort of consider <coughs> a key example using the uh, function notation that we've talked about in other videos, uh, f of x equals 1 over x. So this is a function which, uh, if not defined at 0, because if I plug 0 in, I get 1 divided by 0, that's not defined. But otherwise it is defined, we can look at some values, we can see that uh, f of 1 equals 1, because 1 over 1 is 1, f of 2 equals 1 half, f of, I don't know, 5 equals 1 fifth, f of 100 equals 1 hundred, and we can also see that uh, f of uh, half, if I plug half into the function, then I get 1 divided by a half, which is actually equal to 2, and f of, say, a quarter is 1 divided by a quarter, which is 4, and so on. f of 1 over 100 is 1 divided by 1 over 100, which is 100. And I'm, I'm not uh, uh, looking at negative values now, because uh, you could. This function is defined for negative values, but uh, that's not the point of this video. So um, we also talked about graphing functions, and actually, since I'm not looking at negative numbers, I'll give myself some more space to draw the graph like this. So here's 0, 5. So if I were to graph this function, we know that uh, 1 maps to 1, and 2 maps to half, and 5 maps to a fifth. And we also know that half maps to 2, and a quarter maps to 4. So if I were to draw the graph of this function, it looks like it would look something like this. Which is kind of a cool looking function. So we can see that as we put larger and larger values into the input, we get smaller and smaller values in the output. And as we put smaller and smaller values in the input, we get larger and larger values in the output. And so this idea, the idea, there's actually two ideas here. One is the first one, that as we put larger and larger inputs in, the value of the function gets closer and closer to zero. And the way that we can write that, once again, I'm not defining the notion of a limit precisely, this is just using your intuition, is that the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x equals zero. So this just expresses the idea that as I put larger and larger numbers in, so this x goes to infinity, that's saying, uh, think of putting larger and larger numbers in. I can't actually put infinity in because, at least in this framework, infinity isn't a number. This function isn't defined as something called infinity. It's just sort of a concept for now. But we can uh, sort of implement that concept by thinking of just larger and larger numbers. 2, 5, 100, 1,000, a million, a billion, whatever. So as x gets larger and larger, that's what this is saying, f of x gets closer and closer to 0. So that's how we express that. So this is one way that infinity comes up in math as a notion of getting larger and larger. And the other way that it comes up, uh, I mean, there are many ways it comes up in math, but the other way it comes up in this picture is with the second limit that I sort of informally describe. The limit as x goes to 0, and now there's a sort of technical thing here, when I say x goes to 0, what do I mean by goes to 0? I mean gets smaller and smaller. Technically, uh, I have to distinguish between going to 0 from the right-hand side, like, like here, a half, a quarter, a 1 over 100, that's getting smaller and smaller in positive numbers, versus getting smaller and smaller, but from the negative side, like, you know, minus 2, minus a half, minus a tenth, and so on. That's another way of 
going to zero. So I'll put a little plus sign here, and I, that just means as x goes to zero from uh, the right, from positive numbers like this, a half, a quarter, one over a hundred, I could keep going one over a thousand. So as x gets smaller and smaller, right now again, I can't just put zero into the function f of x because we saw right at the beginning that the function is not defined as zero. Right? If I put zero in literally, I get one divided by zero. That's, that's like error, undefined. But I can put smaller and smaller positive numbers into f of x. That's sort of as I get closer and closer to, to zero here. And what I see is that the output gets larger and larger in an unbounded way. It gets as large as I want it to be. And so what we say is that the limit as x goes to zero from the right of f of x is infinity. And we see infinity cropping up for a second time, this time not as the limit of the input, but as the limit of the output. So this one function uh, sort of interfaces with infinity in two ways. As you put larger and larger numbers in that approach infinity in some sense, you, the output approaches zero. And on the flip side, as you put smaller and smaller positive numbers in, right, as they approach zero, the output approaches infinity. It gets arbitrarily large. So here we see infinity arising in two different but closely related ways, and both of them make perfect sense. So we should contrast this with my other video, um, Infinity is Weird, which shows infinity acting in a quite different way and, uh, in a sense, crashing your intuitions. So this is another view on how infinity crops up in mathematics.